All right, so good morning, everyone. Um, it's great to see you all virtually. Um, I'm Heather Drake. I'm the Membership and Engagement Director with the Maine Public Health Association. And we're here today to provide an overview of Maine's governmental public health system. So really appreciate you joining this morning. Go to the next slide, Becca. Um, so just a few housekeeping things. Um, as I mentioned, we are recording today's session and we'll send it to registrants <clears throat> after we get it all uploaded. And we'll also put it on our website as well at that link that's on the screen. Um, and I can share that in the chat in a minute too. Uh, we are asking that everyone please stay muted um, and we'll take questions at the end of the presentations through the chat. And you can feel free to put those in the chat at any time. And you should have access to closed captioning um, that'll pop up. Um, so if you have any problems with that, please just enter that in the chat as well. Um, and I just want to thank you all for being here again. For those of you who aren't familiar, Maine Public Health Association is uh, Maine's largest public health organization. We have just over 600 members and 50 organizational members, and we work to educate uh, advise and act on critical public health issues in Maine. So we do education, advocacy work, we provide professional development. We are not affiliated with the Maine CDC. We're a separate organization and we are an affiliate of the American Public Health Association and happy to answer. We won't go in too much to, to who we are as an organization or what we do, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, so please feel free to put those in the chat as well and I can answer those separately. Um, and then we are joined uh, today by Chris Lyman, who is a member of uh, MPHA and also a member of our Public Health Infrastructure Member Section, who put to get to who put together the story map um, that I hope you've all had a chance to look at. And I'll put that link again in the chat, um, along with other members of our Public Health uh, Infrastructure Member Section. So thank you to everybody who worked on that and who worked on today's presentation. We're really excited about it. And then Becca Bolas will also be joining uh, along for the presentation to talk about the vision aspect of the story map and what's in there. So um, with that, I think I will turn it over to Chris. Well, good morning, everyone. Are we gonna do the who's here? I did, I forgot to do that. Um, sorry, and I know some folks are already doing it. So if you can, Please introduce yourself in the chat. We've got a lot of folks on the call, and who you are, where you work, uh, or where you might be affiliated with, and where you're calling in from today. And I know some people were talking about the gorgeous weather they're having, so feel free to put that in there as well. Um, and then I should be able to launch this poll while you're introducing yourselves in the chat, um, just to get an idea of who's in the room. So please go ahead and take that too, and I'll give uh, a minute or two for folks to do that. Looks like we've got a lot of great introductions happening. Um, we've, we're three quarters of the way to participating in the poll. Give it another few seconds for anybody else who wants to take it. I can share those results. So hopefully everybody can see that. Looks like we've got a few students, some. Uh, faculty on the academic side, uh, a few municipal or county level folks, and most of us are working in the health or social service nonprofit world. So thanks everybody for being here. And now I will turn it over to Chris. I'm on. Okay. You're on. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for being here. I hope by the end of this time, we leave you with um, uh, as, as many new questions as you may have gotten answers uh, for uh, today's session. Go ahead and move the slide on. So let's let's talk a little bit about how this came together. I wasn't the part of the um, 
the membership who did the story map process with the uh, software program, but um, I probably um, spent a fair amount of time uh, looking at the legislative statutes um, and using lived experience as a um, former uh, staff at the main CDC. So I had a lot, some institutional memory and was joined with others who had institutional memory of the last 20 years or so. Um, we did look, our guidelines were to keep it focused and probably this was absolutely the hardest part of the work was to not try and include everything we wanted to say. Public health people love to tell you what everything is about and that's what we trip over our own feet when we do that sometimes. So starting with the main statute, uh, particularly that, that uh, those that are in the health and human services uh, air arena was how we started, although there's no single place where all the statutes related to public health reside. So you have to, you have to look around. So we have a list of citations that, that we can offer. We will put in additional documentation. And um, that was how we started. Okay, we also documented our meeting minutes and um, again, was a reader friendly form. This was just really important to keep it simple. It is so hard to keep it simple. And all you have to do is read a, a grant application that describes Maine's public health system and you'll see all these different descriptions of what it is. So we hope that one of the things that this document does is to help more of us be on the same page about how we describe the system. And MPHA staff and the board also reviewed and approved this. And this document has been shared with the main CDC. Okay, so our, our, the outline of the story map looks like this. You start with an overview of what public health is. And the key issues we talk about is we provide the 10 essential services reference since that is a, a, a core a building block uh, for the foundation of public health. And then we list core areas of public health practice. And we mention how much money that if you invest in public health, you'll save on the other end. We're particularly interested in addressing the issue of public health authority and enforcement. And that's why ultimately we uh, stuck with governmental public health because we really needed to look at what the laws say about who does what, who has authority and to do what, and who has the responsibility to carry through that authority. Once we've covered that, we then go through the, the actual governmental infrastructure and we only do three levels where we talk about state, regional and local and talk about the types of funding that support that infrastructure. It's almost impossible to separate talking about the infrastructure from talking about the funding. And then Becca will be talking about the vision and more information and resources. Okay, thank you. So where are we going with this one? I think we did the overview, right? Uh, this is where you go through the sections of the story map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, the this is um, the overview was important to uh, describe some history because people really don't know how, how old the system is or how long it's been worked at. And um, it is fascinating to see how it changes over time in terms of 
both the name of the system and um, who has what authority. And we do um, have a vision for strengthening. We don't know what the answers to that, to that vision is necessarily, but we know that in the field of public health right now, in the past few years, there's been a lot of discussion about improving public health. And it's a living document. So we're expecting things to change. And the way that the, the document uh, is set up, there will be of uh, the last page will actually have a reference to the last time that the document was um, changed. Um, that's going to be very important because we anticipate that it may be that in the next few weeks, even we make some changes based on some of the conversation that we have today. Thank you. So the orientation to public health, we cover a definition. We offer a definition we, that took a long time to decide. Um, we want to try and emphasize that this is about the system, not about a single organizations, but rather the system as a whole that's coordinated. And again, we talk about start with these 10 essential public health services. You'll see that a lot. The, the core areas that we list, actually that list comes from a, a paper that's a little old now called the Public Health 3.0, but it lists the, the umbrellas uh, topics under which all things are listed. You might not see your area of interest in there, but it's actually been thought about and you know you can always ask well where is substance health, substance abuse on this one and you know you can get an answer on this and we can't talk about the impact on the economy anymore we can't just talk about public health without talking about the economics The public health authority is broken down um, in, in the national field when they looked at public health, they really are asking who, who has authority to decide what. Um, and uh, in some cases it's the state, in some cases it's the local. Regional and local often will intertwine in terms of those same questions. Um, regional is not considered a statewide uh, uh, entity. So uh, people look at who, who decides um, the type of people who are involved in those decisions and um, what the size of the budget is and where the funding comes from. And who has, again, the authority to enforce a rule or, or is sort of raw milk uh, statutes uh, something that's handled at the state or the local level. And finally, it is very confusing to figure out what is our state public health agency versus DHHS. And the term that's used is DHHS is an umbrella agency. So that will have things like main care in it and um, ODES, the you know, Office of, of Aging and Disability. Uh, it has a variety of offices. And this again, I'm not gonna go through it. It's simply to sort of say, please, if you're not already familiar with, I really encourage you to take a read of this because this is, it's a process as well as uh, a list and understanding the steps in the process itself helps us to understand what the public health system is. Thanks. So we do cover what's happening at the state level and what the role of the state is in comparison with regional and local uh, parts of the system. Um, 
and uh, we we bobble a little bit between here between all the things that could be versus what we're seeing in statute. We really stuck to what's in statute. Take it away. Thank you, Chris. Um, I think that that's helpful to walk through what's in the, the story map. And I, I just want to underscore, I mean, you saw in that, that first slide of Chris's section that this was about a year long process for the member section. And so to take everything that is in statute and try to distill it down into um, a more di digestible and easier to understand story map was was quite a process. And so in looking at, at that, you know, at the at the resulting um, product, uh, the the member section with input from MPHA staff and the board and, and other stakeholders, we identified some vision statements that I'll go over in a moment. And that's really what rounds out the document or the, the story map. And then at the end, at the very end, we do offer uh, more information both about MPHA as well as links to Maine CDC. Um, and then we do offer additional resources, including information from the American Public Health Association, which as Heather said, we're an affiliate of, of them. Uh, our, our email address is on there, so is our website. So if you do have questions as you're looking through this, um, either today or, or in the future, we do have our contact information on there. So I'm going to start talking now about the, the um, vision statement at the very end of the story map. I can get the slide to go. There we go. So um, our first part of our, our vision, and, and I, I want to just underscore that with these vision statements, I don't want to suggest that we, we don't want to suggest that these aren't happening already. It's really important to pay attention to certain words that are in here, like sustained. Uh, and you'll see words like that in our vision statement, because we want, we're, we're, intending these to be not just one moment in time or one administration or, you know, we, we want this to be an ongoing or sustained commitment. Uh, and then with this first with this first vision, a sustained commitment to ensuring that all people in Maine have a fair, just and equitable opportunity to achieve optimal health and to benefit from essential public health services. So again, there this certainly uh, all of you that are here today and your colleagues ha certainly have a commitment. We want to make sure that that commitment is sustained at all levels of government and that there continues to be support for that. So I just I really want to uh, underscore that it's the with the vision. It really is those types of particular words um, around sustained, ongoing, things like that. So that's our first component of our vision. The second is strategic and sustained coordination of Maine's policies and assets to protect and improve health and reduce health disparities at the state systems level with an emphasis on public health infrastructure and workforce development. Support for a, a regional approach to address public health where local governments and community organizations are engaged and collaborate. And again, we see, we see these efforts underway right now, not always consistent across the state. And so we're, we're looking for that sustained commitment and support so that everybody in all parts of the state um, has that fair, just, and equitable opportunity to achieve optimal health. Our fourth uh, vision statement is that there is a balance between accountability for the use of state and federal funds and shared local and state ownership of decision-making. There, there is comprehensive emergency preparedness planning and resources for all regions and municipalities throughout the state to aid in the preparation for future public health emergencies. And then our last vision statement is that there is a commitment to continue to innovate and advance public health practice and workforce development. So our idea behind these vision statements is that again, with this document, we looked at what was in statute. Um, we looked at opportunities to strengthen what already exists, um, to innovate, to modernize, um, looking at what's going on across the country. There are efforts underway with FAB, which is the Public Health Accreditation Board, with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, 
Um, there, there's just a lot of effort, especially with the pandemic, but it was happening even pre-pandemic, just looking at how states can strengthen their public health system. And so we looked at that work and we looked at what was going on here and identified these, these six areas uh, for our, our vision, for the association's vision, and then um, looking at ways that we can, we can contribute to the public health system in that way. So with that, um, I wanna just identify our next steps in this process. The first is that we want to collect, uh, discuss, and incorporate feedback. We've, that's been ongoing and will continue. This is one, one way is through this, this webinar. We've had meetings with other groups, getting their feedback. As Chris said in the beginning, this is very much a living document. We know that there are changes underway right now uh, with funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and, and other sources of funds. Um, our system does continue to get different resources. And so you can see how those changes could impact what's on the, the story map. And so as Chris noted, we will have an, a last updated date on the in the footer of the story maps. So you can see when we last updated it. We want your feedback. Um, this took a year. I just want to underscore that, that what you see on here, that that was distilled down from a much bigger document. So all of that took a very long time, um, and we recognize that that there is feedback, and we want that. Um, we certainly want to make sure that that this is accurate and and reflects um, people's experiences. But again, it's also based on what what is in state statute. I also just want to acknowledge, and this is really important. Um, this graphic here you see on the bottom right is from the U.S. CDC, and they they last updated it in 2021. Although I think some of you may recognize this from from years pr prior to last year. And what this is a graphic of is the public health system. And as Chris mentioned, we do define it in the story map, but it's really important. I just want to hyper highlight that. It's not just government that's part of the public health system. There are a lot of other groups. Um, and indeed, there are parts of government that we didn't put in here right now. Um, this is a, an evolution. It's a living document. So our plan, I, I, I highlight this because if you don't see yourself in here, we we know you exist. And we're, we're, our plan is to continue to add um not necessarily to this story map because this focuses on government, but additional story maps and additional resources that talk about the other components of the public health system. And I just, I really want to acknowledge that, that our, our plan with this is to continue to grow. Um, looking at non-governmental partners, including hospitals, including community health coalitions. Um, I'm sorry that the graphics cutting off emergency management, but that's what that's supposed to say, not emergency manager. Uh, so we we see this is how we see the system. Again, this came from US CDC. We agree. This is also how we think about it. And so again, if you don't see yourself here, we you're you'll be in 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 a in a future iteration of this. So um, we welcome increased participation. Um, this members. MPHA offers five member sections, and this is one of them. So it is for members, but it's an opportunity to participate in this process and to provide feedback and, um, and engage in an even higher level in just providing feedback in terms of the, the development of content. And as Chris said, I mean, leading research on it and spending time looking through, through materials. Um, so I just wanted to highlight those, those two next steps. And then the last, uh, just to, I think Heather had said this in the beginning, but if you have questions, please enter them in the chat. And then we thought that probably the most organized way to collect feedback from folks um, might be uh, to provide us with feedback uh, using a, a survey monkey tool. So that's the link right there. Um, and we just ask that if you want to do it now or you want to do it later, but if you could provide us with your feedback, that would be really helpful. Um, we, we want that feedback. We want to make sure that we've either considered, um, information to add to this one, or we have it on our, you know, on our, we can add it to our list, uh, to work on for, for future iterations of talking about the public health system in Maine. Um, and so I think that's the end of our presentation. And so I'm actually going to stop, um, sharing my screen so I can see all of you again. And I don't know, Heather, if any questions have come in the chat. Um, not yet. So please feel free to ask questions. Um, again, a reminder, we will be sharing the recording with everyone who registered and it'll, it will be on our website as well. Um, we've got a couple of thank yous in the chat and uh, 
an appreciation for the graphic that you shared with the community health centers and FQHCs often being um, overlooked. So appreciate that that's included. Um, one question here, uh, I think it may be strategic and useful to have some expectations and commitments from university uh, and research stakeholders. What do MPHA folks want and need from our university partners and leadership? It's a great question, Kate. Thank you for that question. I what I think is, I mean, having worked uh, at uh, at USM and at UNE before that, but at USM more recently, I think we need to get out more of the work that you're all doing. Like we need to have more opportunities for people to learn about the research that's going on, the programming. I think about the community health worker project that you're you're doing. I just I think that MPHA can be a partner for sharing that and for how those efforts are are part of our public health system. They're impacting our workforce development. Um, there's just, there's so, sometimes there is a disconnect between those different partners that were in that graphic and the work they're doing. Um, and not everyone knows what they're, what they're doing. And so I think that one of the, the roles that MPHA can play is really uplifting that work that's going on at the university um, level. And then similarly, in those types of environments, I think there can be an opportunity to learn about what else is needed in terms of research or in terms of support for workforce development. And that could impact the type of work that is going on So at, at university. So I think there can be a, a bi-directional um, learning opportunity in that type of an environment. I don't know, uh, Chris or, or Heather, if you have other ideas, um, but that would be my initial reaction to that, that very thoughtful question. So thank you, Kate, for that. Yes, I, I think particularly um, in the area of workforce, um, there could be a lot more conversations in, in place. Uh, for accreditation purposes, the main CDC is required to develop a state workforce plan. And um, we haven't had one that we can look at lately, um, but workforce is considered a really key issue, not only within the MPHA vision, but at the uh, national level, it is one of the topics that consistently is listed in um, public health system improvement recommendations. There was a uh, the bipartisan uh, policy center just released um, an, a, a report in December that lists six areas for improvement and one of them is workforce. So it would be great to really extend uh, the information about what's happening and where it's happening. Thanks, Chris. And I'll just echo that and add um, to, if, you know, sharing this story map with, with your students and others, as we, you know, grow the public health workforce, we really want people to understand the foundational and governmental aspects of it. And I think it's really important for anyone who's entering into public health in Maine to have that understanding. Um, and two, you can provide that feedback in this survey, but considering, you know, helping us, what else do your students need to know about or, um, or faculty who are teaching public health, what would be helpful for them? Um, and to, you know, always feel free to reach out. If, if you do have something you'd like to share with our membership, I'm happy to put it in our newsletter or you know, try to create a webinar or other educational opportunity for our members to, to share that. Um, and Renee, thank you. She just made a note uh, to share this with board members and integrate it as part of new board member and staff orientation. So that is a great idea. So thank you, Renee. Yeah, thank you. And I would just, I mean, going back to that survey monkey, but also that our contact information is on the bottom. If as you're sharing this, you have questions or if something could be clarified or if it'd be helpful for one of us to come and present on it, we're happy to, to do that. I think the more that this is shared and the more feedback we can get um, and, you know, different things to flag for us, that's, it's, it's incredibly uh, helpful for us. You know, it was a big, team effort, but the public health community in Maine is, is very large. And so it's, it's always good to have, um, have feedback from folks. And I think too, again, just, just keeping in mind that we are planning future iterations of this. So um, as, as we progress and prepare those, we'll have future webinars and opportunities to talk about those, those other components. And 
if there aren't opportunities to talk about them, we should talk about that. And what do we need to have happen so that there are opportunities? Because I think that there's so many of us who are involved and care a whole lot about what's happening in Maine. And um, there's it, it's important that we have a broad uh, dialogue about what we'd like to see. Thanks, Chris. And we've already got people talking in the chat about how to share and collaborate. Um, so that's great. And we did have another question from Michelle. She wants to know what office or organization in Maine is working to pull together evidence on increasing access to social determinant improvements for those most in need and or how healthcare government and NGOs may work more efficiently together to round out services. That's a really good question. Um, and I know it's not us, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, I mean, in different parts, but I wouldn't say that we're taking the lead on that. So I, and I don't wanna speak for Maine CDC. So let me follow up on that, Michelle. I think I have some ideas about who that is, but I, I don't wanna misspeak. So I will make sure to follow up with you, but that's a really, really important question and very thoughtful question. So thank you for, for asking that. And, and for printing on your, your camera, it's nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I think one of the things that's happening is we're seeing a lot of sparks at the state level and things are going on in different places. And of course, we're hoping that people are talking to each other and across state agencies. Um, in fact, one of the things that's happening in public health system improvement uh, these days is you'll see a lot of recommendations for multi-agency and multi-sector conversations about issues like equity. Um, and I think hopefully that's one thing that we sh I would like to see <coughs> is that there's more multi-sector. And by sector, it doesn't mean organization per se, it means the system. So it's like the housing system, the transportation system, the healthcare delivery system, the financial and banking system. I mean, there are a lot of sectors who all are contributing in their own way. They may not even know that they're contributing to public health. That's the irony of it. Um, I've been lucky enough to be involved in some of those conversations and it's kind of lit a fire. Um, so I'm really interested in, in continuing that involvement and sharing, you know, whatever it is that, that my group that I work with is coming up with and also collaborating with people on a, in a broader sense. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. And I will just add our, another one of our member sections, our health equity member section is putting together a series this year, which kicks off today at noon um, on health equity, social determinants of health, social risk, um, so if people are interested in attending that, I can put the link um, in the chat. That's at, at noon today, and it'll take place over the course of the year. Just to offer people some hope as well, um, I want to say that at the federal level, there's a lot more awareness of the challenges that public health systems have faced. And there's now, in terms of the role of social determinants, and health equity, there's now a congressional caucus made up of congressional legislators in the House who are focusing on social determinants of health. And in this last session, over 132 bills were introduced to that address one or another aspects of in calling on states to start addressing the issue. A lot of great resources in the chat. Thank you everybody for adding these. I see Haley's comment about Portland Public Health uh, and the CHIP. Heather linked to the registration for our noon webinar um, kickoff on our health equity series that she was just mentioning. So thank you all for adding these. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> nice. Uh, and yes, we will, uh, if you register for the webinar this afternoon, that will be sent 
um, the recording of that will be sent to all registrants and we'll have it on our website as well. We've stated I just want to flag, oh, sorry, Heather. Oh, no, I was, I was just going to see if there are more questions, but go ahead. I was just going to uh, flag, Renee did ask in the chat about when we're going to close the survey monkey. We don't have a plan to do that anytime soon, so we'll we'll leave it open, especially seeing your plans, which we're really excited about for sharing this with folks. Um, we'll just leave it open, um, I think, and and we get a, an alert. I mean, if you use Survey Monkey, you know you get an alert when there's additional feedback that's submitted. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Um, so just know know that. So thanks for that that question and for all your engagement. This is this is wonderful. Thank you. I also want to shout out. Uh, we made a decision to not to list the names of all the members of the um, Public Health Infrastructure Committee, but there really was a lot of work by a lot of people. And certainly Hannah and Haley and Sarah and Doreen really worked a lot of extra hours, although this is a monthly committee meeting, there was a lot of uh, sub subcommittee meetings. And um, I, I can't emphasize enough how much effort we and thoughtfulness people brought into um, thinking about, um, you know, what word to use, literally, you know, the word parsing was important because in the end, what you put down on paper is what people can refer to. And no matter how many times you talk about the public health system, if you don't have anything down on paper, you don't necessarily have a common description for people to work from. So, you know, if we can, if, if we can, be successful in having people even thinking about the fact that there's a governmental component and there's the state, regional, and local levels, that that itself is pretty important without getting into all the partners. And that's where we often get um, stuck <laughs> is we, we go off into our particular areas of interest. It's kind of like uh, patting your head and rubbing your stomach. I'm not, um, thank you, Chris. I'm not seeing any um, other questions in the chat. So I think, again, please use that SurveyMonkey link. Um, I think you all know how to reach Heather and me uh, in some way, shape or form. Um, so please, please do. And, uh, if you're not a member of MPHA, uh, and, and would like to participate in this process for future maps, or even for, for this one, uh, we welcome you to, to join the organization. Like Heather was saying, we do have another section on, on health equity. We have one on climate change, um, on, on obesity and on alcohol, tobacco, and, and other drugs. So there's a, a range of issues that our, our members are engaged in. And they do different projects like this, like policymaker town halls, like webinar series. Um, there's a whole a whole host of different activities that they do. So um, I just want to thank you all very much for your engagement this morning. This has been been really great. And I want to thank Chris for for presenting today on that on behalf of the group. Um, and we're just really, really grateful. So thank you all very much. I don't know, Heather, if there's anything else you want to add to, to close out. No, just reiterating that thanks. Um, it's Chris, Chris highlighted a few folks who worked on this, um, but there were many, many others who are involved as well. So thank you to everyone who put in the time. It was definitely, as we said, a year long effort um, and we'll continue to make tweaks and add to this. So please do share feedback. Um, if you're interested in learning more about membership, I put that in the chat as well, but just thank you again, everybody for coming and for all your great work in public health and have a good uh, rest of your morning.